Hello and welcome to the March 2024 edition of Photo Recap. My name is Josh, and if you're new to the channel, this is where I take the opportunity to talk about my five favorite photos that I took in the last month. Without any further ado, let's jump right in. This photo was taken on Kodak Gold 200 with the Bronica SQAI. I mentioned a few videos back that you could probably be expecting a lot of photos taken on my new Bronica SQAI, and this month proves that I am a lot of things, but a liar is not one of them. I've sort of been on the hunt for places in New York City that I haven't been to before or places I haven't photographed, and at some point this month I had a bit of an epiphany. I had heard tales of this mythical land that people call Queens. Very few people have actually been there, and those who have gone never returned. I'm obviously joking, but uh, there is something to the fact that certain areas of Queens can be hard to get to via public transportation from where I live in Brooklyn. But regardless of that, I decided to say f it and take the 90 minute trip to a place I wasn't sure was going to yield very many results. And obviously it wasn't a total waste of time because, well, I got this photo. First and foremost, I just really dig the colors in this photo. You can't beat the mixture of teal and orange. Teal and orange are complementary colors, and we use complementary colors in visual art as a way of providing well-defined contrast as well as depth. Teal and orange has been a winning combo for years, not just in modern cinema color grading or movie posters. I mean, you can go far back and look at Van Gogh's Starry Night, for example, or Impression Sunrise by Claude Monet. Beyond the color, what works in this photo for me is the geometry and the patterns within the image. The vertical lines that switch back and forth between shadow and light is just so satisfying. There's a part of me that bounces back and forth between liking and hating the power lines in the top left corner. At the moment, I'm on the side of hating it. I just think that it causes a bit of a distraction without adding much to the overall composition. I guess what I was going for with this image was something akin to what Kyle McDougal has been doing with his images throughout the years. He has this video from like four years ago where he discusses his editing style and it's very much highlights down, shadows up. I think that this is a step in the right direction. You may recall uh, my video about finding my style that I put out recently and part of that entails in emulating the work of others who you admire. So I'm trying it out and it's gonna be a work in progress, but I'm hoping that all of you will stick around for the ride. This photo was taken on Harman Phoenix 200 with the Ricoh XR2. So I shot my second roll of Harman Phoenix to middling results. I'm not saying it was the fault of the film, mainly just the fault of my lack of inspired shooting. It's not perfect by any means, but you should all know my thoughts on Phoenix by now. If you don't, go check my video on it. The shadows didn't hold up very well, but that's okay. What I think elevated this photo is the color and the halation. The composition isn't anything to write home about, but we get some nice warm colors and that green on the O just pops off the screen. If that O had been any other color, I don't think that this photo would work as well. There's also this L shape that we're looking at here. When composing an image like this, that L shape can help keep our eyes moving fluidly. The building and the big letters intersect with that giant red structure in the background, and I have to thank past Josh for keeping the red structure separated from the green O. The fact that there is an overlap there just keeps the photo feeling more intentional. Overall, I like this photo. I don't love it, but it's what one might consider to be vibey. And I think we should all be able to appreciate that term without it being as pejorative as some of us make it out to be. And yeah, I'm including myself in that. This photo was taken on Kodak Gold 200 with the Bronica SQAI. My girlfriend Harley and I went to this museum called Photographiska in Manhattan, and we saw an exhibit of the work of photographer Frank Achenfels. After that, we were walking to the subway and I saw this enclosed outdoor dining area just getting blasted with sunlight and I had to take a photo. I was a little nervous how it would turn out because the window was pretty dirty that I was shooting through. You could even see some of that over here and here. At first I thought that those were light leaks, but I think they're just reflections refracted off the window in front of the lens, or it could be some flaring happening since the sun might have been hitting my lens. 
We're getting that nice medium format depth of field with our focus on the upside down glass on the table. Now in terms of still lifes, it isn't the most beautiful, but it is a reminder to take the time to be on the lookout. Although as photographers, we probably don't need much reminding of that. I find that in my personal day to day, if I don't have a camera on me, I tend to see things that catch my eye and then I say, God, if only I could take a photo of that. So I guess the reminder that this photo gives me is to actually take the photo. I also just wanna shout out the green leaves in the background. I think that without those green leaves, this photo might not work as well. It might just be too much brown going on. Those greens really help to create a bit of separation and depth to the image. And on that note, it actually would have been nice to have the glass that I have in focus completely within the sunlight because I'm seeing now that the bottom of the glass or the top of the glass technically completely disappears within the shadow. And it almost makes the glass look like it's floating, which is interesting, but not exactly something that I'm thrilled about with this photo. This photo is taken on Arista EDU Ultra 100 with the Bronica SQAI and a red filter. So two weeks ago, I released a video about using a red filter when shooting black and white film. And the video quickly became my most viewed video and garnered quite a few new subscribers. So if you're new to the channel, first of all, welcome. And also this photo will probably look pretty familiar to you. So this was taken on the High Line in Manhattan and it's a photo of a bright red tree. I'm gonna show you a video of what the tree actually looked like. Now, if you didn't watch that video about the red filter, I urge you to go watch it because you might be wondering why the tree looks so bright white in my image if the tree itself was red. Very briefly, I'll explain that when you use a red filter on black and white film, what you're doing is essentially allowing red light to reach the film more easily, which will then in turn cause it to appear whiter within the image. So I wanted to include this image in my top five, mainly because as a photographer challenging myself and also experimenting is something that I need to make more of a priority. So I took this as a series of photos for that video, but also as a way of experimenting to see if using a red filter was something that I would enjoy. And what I found was that I do. And I actually have some ideas for some projects that I might want to do using the red filter in the future. Now, this photo isn't technically compositionally a great photo, I think, but it is a nice reminder of the importance of experimentation. I don't love this photo for the traditional reasons. I love this photo for whatever it represents and because it's a great depiction of what a red filter can do to your black and white images. This photo was taken on Kodak Gold 200 with a Bronica SQAI. And last but not least, we have this photo of some buildings that was taken in lower Manhattan. Harley and I were just out for a walk. We had just gotten some food or we were on our way to get some food. And I saw the sun bouncing off this building to our left and illuminating this white building that you see here in a nice soft glow. And it was almost without a second thought that I picked up my camera and took a photo. This photo is similar to the photo taken at Coney Island with the Phoenix film. We have this L shape, although it is a backwards L, but it keeps our eye moving in a gentle upward motion. We start with the building in the background and then the eye moves to the right and up the building with the fire escapes. Looking a bit closer, I think this image is also interesting to me because of the trees that are on top of the orange building in the background. You don't see that every day and I actually didn't notice it when I took the image. I only saw it when I got my scans back. And also, now that I mention it, here we have again a little bit of teal and orange contrast with the orange building in the back and even the warm yellowish tint of the white building in the foreground. And all of that is against the teal of the sky. Sometimes I look at this photo and I think it's a little boring. And frankly, that's kind of the case for a lot of the photos that I took this month. I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with all of them, which I suppose is better than having a hate-hate relationship with them. Also, here's a bit of an observation. Four out of five of these were shot shooting upwards, looking at buildings, looking at the sky, looking at red, tree sculptures. I'm not sure how I feel about it just yet, but I think that I might have some insight. I personally hate the winter time. I grew up in Connecticut, so I'm no stranger to having all four seasons, but frankly, I wish that I was a stranger to them because winter could 
right off. All of these images were taken on really nice, warm, sunny days when the threat of winter wasn't rearing its head. And metaphorically speaking, they were taken during moments when I felt like things were starting to look up for me. Are you seeing where this is going? When I first moved to New York City in 2014, I came here for college and I clocked something about the people here pretty early on. I noticed that you could differentiate the people who were new to the city and those who had been here for a while based on what direction they looked when they were walking. Because newcomers tend to be in awe at the scale and the craftsmanship of these massive structures and the marvels of human ingenuity and creativity and resilience in the face of inevitable heat death. Whereas a lot of old timers, people who have lived here for a long time, to put it bluntly, they're kind of jaded. They oftentimes physically look down on the city. This is obviously a massive generalization, but I remember thinking early on that I didn't want to become one of those people who stops looking up. I wanted to hang on to that childlike wonder of seeing this city. And sure, it's a little f***ed up and it's not without its quirks, but good lord if it isn't a monument to the persistence of humanity. So seeing that four out of five of these photos were taken looking up, I take that as a metaphor for where I'm at in life and as reassurance that I haven't lost my ability to see the beauty in a place like this. And I think I'm gonna end this video there. Thank you all so much for watching. To any newcomers, thank you for joining the channel. I hope that you'll stick around. Um, for those of you who have not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when new videos are released. Uh, you can head over to my print shop where you could buy a print of my work, help support the channel. You could also help support the channel by hitting that join button. And for a few bucks a month, you can get some perks and uh, yeah, you can help me keep making this channel well into the future. And something that I haven't mentioned in a while is if you have any ideas for future videos that you want to see from me, feel free to put those down in the comments because I always would love to have ideas for things to make for all of you. And with that, I'm gonna end this video with some more photos that I shot in March of 2024, and I'll see you all next time.